hi welcome to another video from 101 hacker.com in the previous video we have seen the lab setup for Android pen testing in this video we will look into the basics of Android apps so let's start every single Android app that we download will have an extension .apk if you take Angry Birds or Busybox or Facebook app any app that you download from internet or uh, Android market it will have the extension .apk this .apk file is nothing but a compressed zip file it means it can be extracted using normal extraction softwares like WinRAR or WinZip or 7-zip etc so when we extract this application using any of these softwares we can actually look at the components that are used to build this application when we extract the application using WinRAR or WinZip th these are the components that we can see the first one is meta inf res android manifest.xml classes.dex and resources.arsc so let's see what they are the first one meta inf folder contains the manifest file and it also contains the certificate of the application every application every Android application that we build should be signed with a uh, self-signed certificate and that certificate will be there in meta inf folder and list of resources and uh, shaven digest of the corresponding lines in the manifest.mf that we'll see we'll have a demonstration actually we'll uh, this man meta inf folder will have the list of resources that we have used to build the application and the corresponding shaven digest we'll see what it is and res is a directory that contains the resources that are not compiled into this last one which is resources.arsc whatever the resources that are not compiled into this file will be there in this res directory and the next one is android manifest.xml file this is the most important file for the user as well as an attacker this is just an, another android manifest file it contains the file permissions for the application every single android app that we build may need uh, some services some permissions from your device so all those permissions that your app needs should be included into this android manifest.xml file and this android manifest.xml file also contains the components that we use to build the app it can be an activity it can be a service it can be a broadcast receiver we'll see the we'll see what they are in the next slide and this particular android manifest.xml file may be in a android binary xml it means we may not be able to read the actual contents of your android manifest.xml file just by extracting it using winrar or 7-zip uh, to actually view the contents we have uh, some of some other techniques we'll see them uh, in later videos maybe and the next one is classes.dex this is one more important file this uh, every single class that we write in java will be compiled into dex format dot dex format and these dex files will be understandable by the dalvik virtual machine which we have discussed in the android architecture video and the next one is android manifest.xml file this is the most important file for the user as well as an attacker this is just an, another android manifest file it contains the file permissions for the application every single android app that we build may need uh, some services some permissions from your device so all those permissions that your app needs should be included into this android manifest.xml file and this android manifest.xml file also contains the components that we use to build the app it can be an activity it can be a service it can be a broadcast receiver we'll see the we'll see what they are in the next slide and this particular android manifest.xml file may be in a android binary xml it means we may not be able to read the actual contents of your android manifest.xml file just by extracting it using winrar or 7-zip St uh, to actually view the contents we have uh, some of some other techniques we'll see them uh, in later videos maybe and the next one is 
classes.dex this is one more important file this uh, every single class that we write in java will be compiled into dex format dot dx format and these dex files will be understandable by the dalvik virtual machine which we have discussed in the android architecture video and let's have a simple demonstration of the same i have built a simple app uh, i haven't downloaded it from android android market i just have built in my system i'm just going to x open it with winrar it is asking me to close i'm just extracting it and closing it see i have extracted and you can see the five uh, things we have discussed which is meta inf res android manifest.xml file you can see the extension over here and classes.dex and resources.arsc let's uh, get into the first one meta inf you can see here the first one is certificate rsa certificate and you can see the manifest.mf which contains all the resources and their uh, sha1 digest you can see them see this is the first resource we have which is the icon of your app and this is its corresponding digest sha1 digest similarly we have a couple of other icons which are actually of different resolutions hdpi this is x hdpi and uh, if you go down we have three xml files one is main xml android android manifest.xml file and these are their corresponding digests so i'm just going back and you can see the next folder which is res it contains the actual resources see this is the icon of your app and this is the background image i have used to build this app you can see here and the next one is android manifest.xml file I'm just trying to open it with uh, Notepad++. You can see you cannot read the contents of this file. So we need to use some of some other techniques to read the contents of this file. We'll discuss them later. And the next one is classes.dx file. These contents are also not readable. So I'm just closing it. So this is how we can actually look into the uh, Android app by extracting it using WinRAR let's quickly go back to our presentation the demo is over and the next one is oh, from a developer point of view if he wants to build an android application these are the core components that he has to use the first one is activity and so next one is service and then intents and then broadcast receivers and then content providers these are the core components of course we have uh, some other components like uh, notifications and shared preferences internal storage sd card storage we have a couple of other um, components but these are the core components that we have that we use and uh, so let's see what they are actually the first one is activity anything that we can interact with is an activity if you have opened your app and if you are trying to touch it then it is uh, an activity it actually contains a user interface and it contains views like a button uh, text view edit text table view etc and the next one is service service also can be treated as an activity with no interface you cannot see uh, what's happening everything will be running in the background example is your music player you can so for, you can simply start it and you can leave it you can do some other activities that you want with your phone so this is a classic example for service and then intent intent is nothing but a message between two components if you want to uh, if you want to communicate from an activity to, to activity to another activity you can use an intent you can uh, using intents we can call other activities other services and we can do a lot of things it can actually bind two components at runtime and it has no user interface but it can start an activity as discussed 
and the next one is broadcast receiver this is uh, one more important tool for uh, developers as well as hackers actually it can perform some action on a particular event for example I want to do something with my application when the user receives an SMS or else I want to do something with my application when the users when the user boots his mobile phone uh, to, to do all this kind of stuff we need to use this broadcast receiver and it can receive and respond to the broadcast announcements examples of boot completed SMS received or charger connected or something like that and the last one is content providers these are simply SQLite databases they can be used to store and retrieve data and these are very very useful for an attacker if the data is stored in clear text or if they if, if the uh, developer didn't use a uh, proper cryptographic algorithm it may be a uh, very useful for an attacker and we have uh, some nice demonstrations we have some nice uh, videos on these topics in later videos so that's all for this video and these are the image credits and thank you for watching guys thanks a lot